Hello and welcome to our mini children's liturgy. I am Helen and it's really nice to welcome you here today. It's the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time and a very important time because now is the time when all of you are probably getting back to school, maybe starting school for the first time, either primary or secondary school, or getting ready to start next week. So there's a lot happening, particularly after such a long break from, from school life. So I wish you all the well as you get ready to go back. Today's Gospel reading is from St Matthew and it's really really interesting it's got two things in it the first thing is instruction from jesus telling us how we should live our lives and how we should help others he asks us to be problem solvers and decision makers and the second part is a promise a really important promise that jesus says when two or three are gathered in my name then i am amongst you and that stands today so it's a really important promise that when we pray with other people or join together to, with, in Jesus' name, he will join us. And we must remember that in our lives today. As always, we've got our candle for children's liturgy, showing that Jesus is present, the light of the world. We have the cross, as we would in church. And we also have God's word in the Bible. And we're going to hear from that shortly. Now, let's just start today with saying sorry. So... If you can remember the words and the tune that we sing in children's liturgy, let's ask our God to forgive us anything that we haven't got quite right over the last few weeks and months. When we say that we are sorry, God forgives. When we say that we are sorry, God forgives. Whether it's large or it's small, He will still forgive it all. When we say that we are sorry, God forgives. ready, forgiven, wipe the slate clean to listen to God's word. So let's make the sign of the cross on our foreheads and on our lips and on our hearts as we say, the Lord be with you. A reading according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. If your brother or friend sins against you, go to him and show him his fault, but do it privately just between yourselves. If he listens to you, you have won your brother back. But if he will not listen to you, take one or two others with you to speak to him again, so that every accusation may be upheld by the testimony of two or more witnesses, as scripture says. And if he will not listen to them, then tell the whole thing to the church. Finally, if he will not listen to the church, Treat him as though he were a pagan or a tax collector. And, I, and so I tell all of you, what you don't allow on earth will not be allowed in heaven. And what you allow on earth will be allowed in heaven. And I tell you more, whenever two of you on earth agree about anything you pray for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are joined together in my name, I am there with them. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, so much going on in that, isn't there? The first bit I mentioned earlier was the instructions. Can you remember what the instructions were? So, Jesus is telling us, as in each individual person belonging to the church, with a loving heart, as we have been designed and made by God, if we disagree with somebody, our brother or a friend, we should go to them and try and solve the problem. So be that problem solver we mentioned. If the person won't listen to us, then go back. Go and gather some more people and go back to that person, two or three, and try again to talk to your brother or friend about what they have done wrong. Try and help them to see sense. If this doesn't work, then go back to the whole church and talk it through. Invite the friend to the church, talk it through. Um, might involve talking with teachers or a priest or friends, family, whatever it takes, bring that church together with love. And then sadly, if the person won't listen then, then it suggests that there's not much maybe we can do at that time. But don't forget about that person, always pray for them, always love them. The next bit of the promise comes the promise of the reading. And that is actually that what we allow on earth is allowed in heaven 
And what we don't allow on earth isn't allowed in heaven. So Jesus is saying to us, you know, we're very important. We can make a difference. If we make the right decisions, if we problem solve in the right way, it can make a big difference to what happens to both here on earth and in heaven. And final part was that promise that I mentioned about again, that when two or more of us are gathered and we pray for something, then God will answer that prayer if it's his, his plan, his design. And when two or more of us are gathered together in Jesus' name, he joins us too. So we're here on our own praying, but if we can pray with a group, then Jesus will also be present. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that on earth, we need to be peacemakers. We need to go to our friends, talk through our problems, solve their problems and do it with love. Remember that heart there, which we all have. And we might need to join, help others, get others to help us, and that's fine. It might be our family, our friends, our teachers, people from our church. But the more of us that join together and support that person to see where they might be going wrong or where they could change their behaviour, the better. And if we can't, then we can't at the moment. But don't worry, that person will be held in God's love and in time change will happen. And we can pray for them that that change will happen. And it's also good to know, isn't it, that what we pray for should happen because that's what the promise is today's gospel. If two or three of us play or more pray together, our Heavenly Father will answer that prayer. And in joining together, again, two or three gathered in Jesus' name, he will also join us, he will be present. So let's make a promise this week to pray more together um, in our families or with our friends um, and just give that welcoming place for Jesus to come and join us. It's such a lovely promise for us today. And um, let's hope then that there'll be much more peace in our world as well with so many problem solvers like yourselves available. Amen. So let's finish with a closing prayer. God, you teach us to reach out to others. Help us to live as you want us to live. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a good week and see you soon. God bless.